All right, Roxy was not lying. As I told you guys, you guys know I have not shut up about shrinking. I keep talking about it, and if you don't watch it, you're a moron. Um, it's, a, it's an absolutely <laughs> incredible show, and I love it. And I can't wait for you guys to now be introduced to Krista Miller, who you probably already know from whether it's Scrubs or Drew Carey or uh, so many different shows and so many different things she's done, but she is Liz on Shrinking. I'm so excited to have her on the show. Krista, how are you? I'm well, thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. And we have the Roxinator with us as well. Don't worry, everybody. She would be so mad at me if I if I, if I I talk to you without it because Krista, it's the truth. She, it is. She was telling me, so she does a television segment on our show. She recommends all the shows and she watches everything right away. And she's like, you have to watch Shrinking. How long did I, I say know. it to you for? Every Since it came out, every day. Why it's, wouldn't you believe her right away? Because he I, doesn't I, trust me. What happened? I don't know. So it's not true. I'm just, I'm, I'm. <laughs> I, you understand. I'm a parent. I have two kids. Yeah. I watch what I, have I can. Three. I watch yes. shrinking. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. What's I your excuse? <laughs> I guess my excuse sucks so far. Because, yeah, so yeah. far. Um, but so you what, watch one recommendation out of every hundred I give you, yeah. and I sold shrinking so hard that you finally watched. And it, it literally had everything in it that would be tailor made for me, like everything about it. But I'll tell you what I love about the show is that it's not only it's this it's the comedy aspect of it, obviously from the cast alone. But when you look at it, you go, okay, can these particular characters start to go into this cliche thing? And they never do. It always goes on to this road of it, uh, the mix of drama and good comedy and real situations. So obviously, um, like when did you first, because you're with your husband coming up with a show with, with Jason, and did you like see the seeds from the beginning of? What happened was Brett Goldstein was, uh, I, you know, he's one of my boyfriends. Right. So one of my questions, obvious, yeah. obviously. So um, that that's that. But he and, and I became we all became friendly, the three of us. And then he was writing a script and he's and, and Bill goes, you know, it's so funny. It's so cute. Bill's uh, Brett's writing a show about therapy and he has a character in it named Krista. He's writing a few of them. I was like, oh, for sure. We're going to run off together for sure. <laughs> But then when, and I wanted to do, I was like, I want to do Brett's script. I want to do Brett's script. And Bill's like, well, first of all, we're in the, in, you know, it was right when the pandemic ended and he's like, you're getting other things. I'm like, I just want to do that. And then Bill wanted to sh write a show about therapy that his was more comedy based and Brett's was dark. And they were like, let's do it together. And then from then on, I wanted to do it. Sure. And also it's, I'm going to say this in the, in the legal way, <laughs> it's loosely based on my psychiatrist. Stutz. Stutz. Phil Stutz. It's my psychiatrist. I, okay, so that blew me away when I found that out. So <laughs> that is for the people for who don't know. Years. Yeah. I it, I listed that as a top 10 movie of last year that Jonah Hill made with Stutz. So Harrison Ford's character is based on your actual shrink. Exactly. Legally, he's loosely based on a lot of different people. <laughs> and <laughs> Allegedly. Um, allegedly. 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 You know, it's, it could be a, a many number of people. Yeah. If but, they hung out in a room, they go, well, you know, you guys have some similarities. Right. So Stutz and then, um, right. So, and my whole family, because I've been seeing him for 23 years, knows all the tools and the things and we all do the thing. And Mike Stutz comes to our house for Thanksgiving. Oh my gosh. And for dinners and is so probably inappropriate in psychiatrist world, but we're close and my kids love him and my kids have a problem they'll call him you know we're kind of in that um world so i was just like as soon as it was going to be about stuts and cognitive therapy which i think is so much more helpful than regular hair therapy that you're just talking and someone says how do you feel about that um i was in i mean i was really like because we they were ready to go probably 10 months before we started shooting. I mean, I was in before they had sold it. I was like, oh, it's gonna get sold. I mean, for sure Damn someone's right. gonna buy it. Yeah. What and made you know that? I just knew it. I just knew it was so good. I think, you know, Brett and Bill have a, di a kind of a different comic sensibility, even though we all laugh and have the same sense of humor, they're just d different. And I and then when Jason came on board, I just knew that, it, I, I just knew it was going to be great. You said that you, so have you in your past had that kind of feeling for particular shows you were involved with, or was it really this one that you just kind of knew? Like this was, because you just there's certain shows that just work, and this show just works. Thank you. I mean, I don't think anyone. That's why I hate. You know, I feel like critics have gotten so mean now. You know, they just will be. I don't read reviews, good or bad, but, but that my friends 
tell me, you know, that have project art that they get so mean as it gets personal and they'll hate people. And I think, you know, no one's trying to be bad in a bad movie. You know, everybody, if you, even an indie, you don't know, and something can go awry that the director doesn't do it or there's what, like for some reason, the sure. cinematographer doesn't work, but no one's trying to not make something great. I mean, for the most part, I would, unless you're doing something just for the money, but this show, I, I remember once, like in the middle of the scene, I turned to Jason and I go, am I crazy? But is like, or, this feels like special. And he said, I know, but you know, you never know. And yeah. And well, I mean, listen, so I, I was, I was just talking about this before I avoided COVID for three years, didn't catch it was f finally caught it about two months ago. And I was leveled, I was out. And you know, you binge and shrinking put me in such a better mood because I was hurting and I was I was laughing so hard throughout it but I was also just like it's 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 loss it's I lost my brother a couple years ago I'm so sorry thank you and um and between that and being able to have a deal with it in your own way and and using humor because uh, uh, something that my whole family has done obviously and watching that and how that's kind of shaped in this but everything that you guys did and the moments that Liz kind of pops up on screen to where she, she she has this purpose is to take care of of Jason's daughter in the in the in the this, the, the, the show and that's kind of taken away from her at a at a second and she's got to figure it out so she has to find her own purpose and it's it is it's like discovery of of like your own self throughout the entire show for each character I thought for each character and I think you know it's interesting with this show like we went away for the weekend a couple weeks ago and you know people weren't coming like kind of a selfie like right away because you think. Don't you have a moment and just talk? But people are like, I lost someone yeah. or my friend lost someone and they I told them to watch this show. And I think they're very careful. The writers are very, very careful in checking with um, psychiatrists and, you know, like to get the, all the therapy stuff and the grief things down properly. Yeah. I think they're really careful with that. Can I just tell you something funny, though? Yes. So I didn't get COVID. Now, obviously, also. Still? Just wait. <laughs> Jump so, the gun, sorry. Yeah. So also, I'm with a, a kid. I have kid, a kid that's in high school, like a kid in college. You know, I'm seeing people. I'm working, and even though they're testing every day, I've been with people. Sure. We're at Warner Brothers. People are dropping like flies. So then we went to the Vanity Fair Oscar party, which was really fun, by the way. It was really fun. Yeah. But my husband got COVID, and he and I was like, I and I think because I hadn't gotten it, that I clearly must have superior genes and I should probably join a study. Yeah, right? like I, I should. I should yeah. probably the call. They're doing a study in New York. Yeah. And I was like, I should probably submit. Um, and then Bill said, and then I started feeling a little nose. I was like, it's allergies. And I was testing it. It was negative. And Bill's like, I can't wait for you to fucking get COVID <laughs> and you stop with your superior <laughs> genes. <laughs> and let me just tell you. So I test, I wrote the, the, the two lines couldn't have been, it was like the most pregnant of COVID you could be. Oh. And I was the crushing disappointment that I don't have superior genes <laughs> and that my husband only had it for four days and worked the whole time. And I was laid out for 10 days. It kicked my ass. It was so it rude. Was bad. I was really, that really, it, my ego really took a huge blow. I'm that. so sorry for you guys. I've had it three times. So <laughs> it must be really, really difficult for you. Well, I'll tell you my ego though, uh, my ego, um, it, it absolutely made me, laugh though watching it so your ego should actually be boost up here because i was it, it got me out of a bad place where it was because it kicked my ass like I was, I was and the line that got me the scene with you and harrison at that party <laughs> talk to me about that because holy shit that is some funny stuff man that was my i mean that was the most fun show oh, to so do good. i i love that episode but harrison on the couch stoned and me <laughs> getting and it was like our first but not I'd worked with him before, but like another, the, a bigger thing. And we were just on that couch the whole week yeah. together. And we were laughing so hard. I mean, Harrison's, that I got Harrison too stoned and be able to sit with him on a couch was my favorite thing ever. I'm sure. And, and he's, I'm not he, going to be able to beat that. No. And he's no. a notorious pot smoker anyway. You never know. Um, but you're like, going to try to beat it though, because there is a season two that is coming. You guys were picked up. For, so congratulations on you. that. I was so excited to hear that. And then a little nervous, of course, with the recent news about the WGA strike. Yeah. Do you know how that's affecting you guys at all? Well, none of us are going to um, cross a picket line. So we're not, unless they um, resolve it, we're not going back to work. So that's a bummer. 
Yeah. So they have they have to. I they mean, have to. They have to. I mean, shrinking. Yeah. I mean, we got it right. We got to get it back. Listen, I feel like I'm. I just want to be clear that. I don't write the show at all, so I feel like me being proud of the show, I'm not trying to be braggy about the show because I don't write it at all, have no, no input. Yeah, <laughs> you, but again, you're, you're, just, you're, no, but you're part of the ensemble that, that makes the show exactly what the reason why it works. It's, it's a team, and the team is, I think you should absolutely be proud of, of, of what the things you're saying. I don't think you were coming off of saying you were writing it okay. at all. I didn't, Thank I, you. No, not at all. I think that when you're in the scene, though, and you're able to create those moments, so like because – there's a specific thing that you guys say, take that scene with you and Harrison in, at the party. It's like, it's the chemistry that you guys have to have. It's the moments, it's the timing. So you may not have written the scene, but you make this. You made that scene as special as it was. Well, thank you. Yeah. I do think Bill has a really, and his he has great casting people that he's worked with forever, since Scrubs Forever, um, Debbie, Romano, and Brett. He has a really great way of casting different people that you want to, because it, when people come up to me too, which I love, everyone had, and my daughter's friends and my daughter, everyone has a different character that they like, Yeah, which is great to have, to have that appeal to different. I had a little, we have an Easter party and I had a 12 year old boy, Sarah Chalk's little boy come up and said, that's my favorite show. Oh, I, and I was that. like, I can't believe this 12 year old boy is saying this. That's Charlie. great. Do you have a favorite character? Um, no, I like, I mean, I'm whoever I'm working with that day is my favorite character. Yeah. You we, mentioned Scrubs briefly, and I, I have to ask you because I heard your husband about a year ago say there will be some form of a reboot at some point. Yeah. What would you want to see? Oh, guys, we got to do a Scrubs reboot and we got to get Bill on it. And Bill is getting annoyed because now I have everyone say it all the time. I feel like it should be a movie, hmm. but I don't know. Maybe it's just a. Long form, something. I yeah, don't know. look at like something like what Dexter just did, right? Dexter had that one kind of one off, uh, series, you know, last another last... one you binged during your yeah. COVID yes, period, one hundred percent. But it's just, but it, but it had. Okay, look, everybody wants wants to see it. Let's do, let's do one more. Why not do something and we're like that? All friends. Yeah. I can only imagine that we would have way too much fun. Yeah, and clearly Zach just directed a few of the episodes on on shrinking as well. Yeah. Too, so yeah. So um, what makes that kind of if you guys kind of are all into it? What is the thing that's stopping it from happening now? Um, I just need to know. Right, as let a me tell you my husband's person. schedule. Yeah, tell me. So when we were doing shrinking, he was also doing a show for Apple with Vince Vaughn called Bad Monkey, mm -hmm. which was an hour, and in Miami in the Florida Keys. So he would fly back and forth and just, we have kids and see kids and mm. be shrinking and doing writing. And now he went right from editing shrinking to, I mean, he can't do it now because he's working, but editing Bad Monkey and writing new shrinking episodes. This is my husband's schedule. Right. He hasn't had a day off in ever. Yeah, He's there writing, you know, doing everything. It's a lot, and I think that one of the things, though, too, where you I heard you mention it before, and just want to get a clarification on it as well, was that first of all, thank you guys for bringing Ty McGinley back into my life. Uh, he, Comedy assassin. He really, really is, and, <laughs> and there's so much I relate to. By the way, too, there was there's a certain thing. <laughs> he's pissing on the balcony, and and you come out like stop pissing at the flowers, <laughs> and but the things where he's. It just, you relate it, to that, Chris? I do. That's you. We have, we had, <laughs> I, there, was, there was something that happened, uh, uh, I'm going to say, a couple of years ago. That's the only uh -huh. thing. Yeah. The only, but I told my wife about it. I told her it's, it's just a relationship that you guys have. But no, the thing that I related to is the idea that he's like, look, I'm going to be home soon. And you, you're like, I don't, you should find stuff to do. He's like, no, you should find some stuff to do. It's this relationship, this back and forth that they have. But his timing and the stuff that he doesn't bring him back to where he's not just kind of and that's what i meant the kind of cliche road it could have went it could have been he's just the dopey husband that right. does it. he's not he's he's a really smart uh dude who just he's just kind of you know sometimes he's a little lackadaisical sometimes he just knows what he wants and i love how kind of laissez-faire he is it's, it's great uh, you know why i love ted i mean really bill has been trying to cast him forever and he's brought got him so close to things and it's been so frustrating and this show, they were thinking of all different like comedians and yeah. different. And I said, well, first of all, it's got to be someone handsome. Let's just let's just start. <laughs> let's get like I want to have a nice. Come on, who am I going to be married? I'm as cute as a button. I'm going to be married to someone handsome. Yes, you are. Right? Yep. Thank you. Yep. And got um, you. and then he goes, oh my god, he called me up from work. He goes, what about Ted McGinley? I'm like, oh my god, hire him right now. He goes, and we can just. He doesn't have to test. He doesn't do anything. And we get him on as a recur. <sighs> Love this. And then everyone fell in love with him. He's also really 
lovely to work with. Like yeah. we've had also the dramatic stuff. Like we have great chemistry. Yeah. And I also think that I didn't want to play the cliche of like having the annoying husband, even though she he bugs her sometimes. I think they have a great sex life. I think they have a sex because you know I think they have a sexy life and love each other. Yeah. Like why does it have to be a marriage that? You know, one person's annoyed and the sex yeah. life doesn't work. And they're annoyed by each other. So some you can get an, you get annoyed with people in marriage, but it's also it's a matter of how much they love each other. And you can tell how much they love each other. You can tell how much they know each other. That's the whole thing. They know each other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so speaking of casting though, so you know obviously right away. So your husband says, We need Tim McGinley. You go out and get him. Yeah. How does the Harrison thing come oh about? Oh my God. So we're so we're Bill was just like, you know, would be great. And also my Stutz says yeah. I'm just going to retire. Jonah Hill made a, a documentary about him and Harrison Ford's playing him, allegedly. 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 Um, he was like, I'm retiring. I and mean, what else? I mean, Phil is like from New York. You know, he's like this New York kid. Anyway, um, so Bill said, they brought up Harrison Ford. He's also our, our neighbor, but he's like, they. we kind of know him a little bit. Brought up Harrison Ford. Is Harrison Ford is your name? No, okay. Yeah. Okay. Because we they brought up Harrison Ford. I'm like, oh my God, he'd be perfect. You should get Harrison Ford. You should get Harrison Ford. And he's like, he's not gonna do it. Just relax. But he happened to be in London and Brett was in London. And you know, Brett's the greatest guy of all time. As I told you, my boyfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Of so we all right. on the Makes same page. Sense. And Brett was there and um uh Harrison was doing um Indiana Jones. And so he said to he liked the script. And he goes, Well, um, I'll meet, and also Brett is friends with Phoebe Waller Bridges, Bridges. Yeah. that wrote Indiana Jones, one of the yep. writers, right? And she told Harrison, and she, Phoebe knows Bill. Oh, Bill and, and Brett are the best. You should totally meet with Brett. They went, Brett said he immediately, Harrison immediately drunk him under the table and was like, I think I want to do it. And that was it. We were like, What? You know, then it was crazy. That is crazy because, like, you know, again, 15, 20 years ago, you hear about certain people doing television. You're like, no, it's never going to happen, right? Now it's like, who's next, right? And then Harrison, what a year with 1923 plus this show. And I I love 1923. I love it. I think this is – I said this to you – know, I'm an Indiana Jones guy. I think that this is the best work he has done. And uh, since, you know, like it, Raiders of the Lost Ark is still one. It's like my thing. But, like, and he's done everything. But there's something about what he's doing. It's that classic Harrison Different. Ford. But yeah. it's, it's And I've seen him do comedy, but not like this. No, and he's funny. And you know what he says? He's actually really, he's so, the, the, I mean, from the second he comes on, he's every man. Like, he's like, oh, I'm just a regular actor. But he is, um, he says afterwards, this is the most fun job I've oh, ever had. Like, that. he goes, in tell. the writing, he said, I didn't know. And I think he likes that, you know, TV moves faster. And we're... We have fun with him, and he's very funny in real life. He's very dry and very funny. You have to be to pull that off. What he's doing, you have to be like that. So the line that got me was, and I, I've been quoting you, Roxy's sick of me saying it, but I was no. I, I rewound it so many different times. <laughs> Who wants some pancakes? Fuck yeah, I'll some pancakes. <laughs> Killed me. Killed me. He I, just says that out of the blue now, yeah, all the all time. All the time. But how yeah. did you guys? Because I heard you. You know, you'd mentioned that in order to find out if if a take is working, you hear like you know the crew. You want to hear the crew, but the problem is, our Rodney Dangerfield Caddyshack thing is they got to stay quiet until until cut. Yeah. So that's why Bill is horrible on set, and and Zach is too. Like if you're doing something funny, especially if they've like pitched a joke, just because why. Some people are great on set is because like Bill especially, we missed him when he was doing Bad Monkey, but he'd mm -hmm. be on an iPad sometimes. He'd be like, that joke's not working. He has no ego about that. Try this, try this line. And he'll throw out lines that are so funny and also he'll whisper lines to us to say so the other person doesn't know. Yeah. And then if it goes over, Bill starts screaming, laughing, and Zach does, and they have to try to be quiet because Ruin the you take, know, and, yeah. and the, ruin the take. But the crew will be after they'll say cut, and you can hear the crew laughing, or you hear crickets. I mean, that's emotional yeah. stuff. You just know, you kind of know it worked or didn't work. Right. But again, Jason, everyone, Jason, Jessica, 
Harrison will say, oh, that was great. I love working with you. I yeah. mean, this is that's the vibe on the set. The show is doing so many things. Like Christian spoke about, it spoke to him after losing his brother. I lost my mom recently. Not that recently, I guess it was 10 years ago. But it speaks to a lot of people who go through major losses. But it's also really funny. What do you feel like you hope people take away from the show? Like, what do you want the show's purpose to be? Um, I just feel like, you know, I feel like uh, a friend, a very, very close friend of mine just lost her sister a month ago. And it's it's hard to know what to say. And then I was like, on Sunday, I was like, do you want to come watch comedy with me? And she had other friends, so she was going to a different comedy show. And I thought, you know, people do laugh in the grief, you know, and it's okay. And I think we feel guilty about it and it's okay to laugh a little. Yeah. And it's also, I think, after the pandemic, I think more and more people, um, a lot, I know a lot of my friends were like, I think I'm going to therapy. I'm thinking of, um, do you know the therapist? I think, you know, more people, more people went to therapy. And I think why I mentioned that Stutz is my psych psychiatrist and I'm quite a private person is that I just think the onus, the, just the whole thing that needs to be taken away. Yeah. You know, that it's an embarrassing thing. You know, Phil really changed my life and allows me to be a better mom and wife and be happy. Yeah. And um, you've been, and you've been saying, you, you, you Since said, Charlotte was about six months old. About six months old, okay. Um, wow, did you watch yeah. the movie Stutz? Yeah. Well, is it weird? I, I can only imagine because I have a therapist and I've never seen my therapist with anybody but me. I was very jealous. I didn't like it at all. <laughs> I was so jealous. And I and now every time he's talking, it's your favorite. I go, what the fuck with this yeah. Jonah Hill? I'm so irritated. <laughs> I don't even want to know <laughs> right. that he sees other people, and he sees really cool people. But. It seems like, but I mean, <laughs> what a, what? And in general, it's just they, just listening to the stuff that you, because Perry was in here before, and you guys had a really great conversation. Just the career that you have had is just is is incredible, and the stuff that you've worked on, and the comedies that you've been involved with, and you've worked on obviously network television. Now you've with the streaming age now, and in, in the height of streaming age, you're on Apple. Do you have? A preference as far as like how network kind of works and how streaming works, the streaming networks is. Well, I can only say that Apple's just been so lovely to us, and no one's down there. You don't. We're not doing any table reads or giving yeah. notes. They trust Bill, which I don't. You know, I don't know you? if it's Bill or. Yeah. They're, they're um, Apple's been really lovely to work with, but I've worked with Warner Brothers for since Drew Carey, and they've always been fantastic to work with. I've never had an issue with like different yeah. so, some some network or studio being um, a problem. I think it's also like just maybe like the creative on, on how it works because it always it's, it seems to me you obviously you know better than I do. But when it comes to character development, I feel on these on these on the streaming shows like I think what's so I think one of the reasons why television is more so where it's at even than movies to be honest. And I was and I, I'm a big movie buff, but you can develop so much in character that like, I think that back again, 20 years ago in front of a studio audience was, was t not that you couldn't do it, but tougher to do because it's, it's, it seems more cinematic now. You know, what's what's great is that, you know, when you're doing, and I know from Bill, when he would do, when he would do scrubs, you have to get it to like 20, you know, like 24 minutes right. or 22 right. minutes yeah. because there's commercials. So you're just, you know, you're just tightening and he's like taking out stuff, taking out character development, getting the jokes in, having it move well, getting all of it in. And with being on a streaming, it's still a half hour comedy, but it can come in at 30 minutes. Right. It can come in at 32 minutes. I mean, you don't want to go really past that because it's it'll be too long. But so you, you have a little breathe. more room to keep let some of the moments sit. Right. And I'm used to rushing a little bit, you yeah. know, of making sure you get the joke. And, and now I, I really like learning shrinking. Like just, I can sit with it for a second, take my time. Yeah, it's like being on stage for for stand up, and it's like you've got you've got 20 minutes as opposed to eight, and you can do the you have that you have that time. Like the other day, we 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 just done a live show, and it was like I had more time to breathe and take those moments and take those pauses because it's like yeah, because like you said, it's like you can still hit those jokes in that amount of time, but the shorter amount of time. But you really got to take your you got to use the rhythm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we talked earlier about how no, you don't write for the show, but I think a lot of people don't know your involvement with your music, not just yeah. on this show, but a lot of different shows. 
I credit you, you don't have to say this, but I credit you for finding Ed Sheeran, at least for me, because with Cougar Town, I mean, that's unbelievable. Who else do you feel like career-wise you found really early on? Um, Josh Radin. Oh, mm. big one. And then we brought back, you know, I'd always loved Colin Hay. I would see him at Largo. And then he, we put his song on, he kind of had a revival of, yeah. and he's so fun. If anyone, if you ever want to see him live, he's so funny and so good. Um, Foster the People, Pumped Up Kicks was nowhere. Oh, and I wow. put that on. That's huge too. Where are you, what are you doing? Just everywhere you go, listening, listening? I go down wormholes. I have a daughter, Charlotte Lawrence, mm -hmm. who's yeah, of a course. singer songwriter, mm -hmm. and she'll send unbelievably me successful. Congratulations! Thank you. And she'll send me music. Her boyfriend is a very successful producer, Andrew Watt, um, and uh, he's just been playing with Iggy Pop. He's a musician and a producer, and uh, he, I get music from people, and then I'll go down wormholes, and then I I go. There's different places where I go, um, but I I try to like I'm doing that work now. For the next season, right. so I bank the I music. That. I have my favorites that I want to use. But again, like there was ten favorites from last season that I couldn't use because for some reason they just don't fit in the in the scene. You, right. So you put them in like you put them in place. I, I they're, they're still they're still new enough that I can hold them. Yeah. But you know when it works when you get goosebumps yep. and then I give it to Bill and Bill's like, well that that's great that works. Well, so how does that because I'm that's to me that's like. One of my dream things. I do that. I, it's I, the most I, fun. It's so much by fun. By the way, if Bill will call me up, like he's doing Bad Monkey Note, and uh, I have a partner, by the way, I don't work, named Tony Von Perview. I don't work by myself. But he, and Tony's taking the lead on Bad Monkey, but Bill will call up and say, you got to look at the scene. Okay. It's all on my thing. And you got to do this thing. I'm not getting eight hours can go by, yeah. and I have no idea where the time went. It's the most fun job. I love that. And that was, you answered my next question was that, that you, so you get sent like the scene. And so, because, you know, obviously there's some people that if they're, if they're writing a particular thing, then they, they can write to the music. But if you're looking at this particular single, you know, it would work there is this. And, and yeah. so sometimes maybe there's one that you had from like, I don't know. Sometimes you can use this song from 10 years ago if it still fits. And not on shrinking. Not on shrinking. I mean, we do, we have. And I'll do for Harrison, I'm yeah. allowed to. Yeah. But we really are trying to keep it. Because I feel like, I know this sounds cheesy, but music has given me so much of my life. And I feel like, you know, being able to start, it's, it gives someone a help yeah. to someone's career that it's like something that I can do to give back. And I was talking to Ben Gibbard, who's the lead singer for Death Cab for Cutie. And yeah. he produced Charlotte's last album. And he he wrote and with Tom Howe the, um, and produced the theme song. That's been for shrinking. Gibbard, yeah. for shrinking. And he said to me, you know, when we were starting, you used a Death Cab song on Scrubs and we were still going to like little venues and that money, I remember he said something it bought, he was able to buy an amp or something like that and kept us all going because that is a chunk of money you yeah. get for clearing. And he said, it's such a gift. And I just thought, so I like to use New, yeah, I get new it. bands. Yeah, I get Harrison, it. though, not so much. Right. But and I love. I've got so much fun. Yeah, but that fits the character too. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. So with music, where does that obviously with your with your daughter being super talented in music and the where where did that come from inside of uh, your family, like with musicians? My, well, you know, my mom had me when she was young. Mm -hmm. um, she was like just a week turned twenty. Okay, when I was born. And uh, she was a supermodel, and so she was exposed to a lot of cool music. And we only had cool in our very like conservative house, but we had cool music. And um, and then in New York, I used to fill in for this DJ at a club my friend owned. And so when he would take a break and I would love it. And then, and I've just, it's always been my thing. And also since there's a Walkman, anything I've, so whatever iteration of that, yeah. I would walk around New York listening to music. It was your therapy before Stutz. Well, yeah, it was my therapy before Stutz. <laughs> also, you used to um, go to SNL as a kid, correct? Yes. It, that must have been exposure to all different kinds of oh, music. Oh, I saw every band. Oh, and that's cool. you, when you go to the musical rehearsal, there's no one there. So it's wow. like the, the class. Do you remember anybody? Oh, my gosh. Duran Duran. Oh, Duran Duran, because we were in love. I was in Duran Duran. I'm in my high school varsity jacket and with my friend from high school watching Duran Duran and oh. no one's in the audience but like Simon Le Bon's mom. <laughs> I was like, this was the best. That's cool. Um, I have to thank you once again. What a, what an absolutely great show this is. I can't wait. Uh, hopefully this the strike 
is is done. You guys, everybody, all the writers get what they deserve. Um, and I can't wait for season two. I cannot wait. Thank you so much for giving us the laughs and everything that you have. And thank you for coming in to share your time today. Thank you so much. I'm so flattered. And I will pass along your kind words to Bill. Please do. Please do. And to Stutz. And to and Stutz. To Stutz. <laughs> and to Stutz. All right, guys. Once again, Krista Miller, check it out. If you have not checked out Shrinking's Time, do it.